college basketball celebrating our 25th season. From Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville, Tennessee, it's a Saturday inside the SEC as number five Kentucky looks to avoid an upset at the hands of Vanderbilt. In the SEC East, the Wildcats are in second place. They're four and one right on the heels of surprising South Carolina. The Commodores have lost four of their last five in the conference. Dave O'Brien along with Jay Billis. Jay Vandy is to reverse that trend. They better contain Eric Daniels. A lefty, very crafty around the basket, averaging over 18 points per game in Southeastern Conference play. And for Vanderbilt, Matt Frege, he's been hot over his last three, 23 and eight. He's going to have to have a big game. He struggled at Rupp Arena, only had 13 points, did not score until nine minutes to go in that one. He is their go-to guy. Memorial Gymnasium has been sold out for two weeks now. Vandy was a top 25 team when tickets went on sale, but those four losses we talked about to Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and South Carolina have stunned them, Jay, and knocked them out of the polls. And they are playing a team today in Kentucky that loves, absolutely loves to play on the road. Kevin Stallings needs his team to come out and stop this team from having a big start, which Kentucky is used to when they step on the road. Ready for the opening tip. In an old-style gymnasium, great to have you with us here for an early start inside the Southeastern Conference. Vandy wins the tip, and we are underway. Kentucky starting off in man-to-man, -man, their usual defense, and this is an outstanding defensive team. They will knock you into the third row. Tyrrell loses it. Hawkins gives it up. The point guard, very talented point guard for the Wildcats. He has it high on the wing. Inside to Daniels. He kicks out. Kentucky being very, very patient. As the bookie got free underneath, and it's taken away on the rebound, but stolen right back by Hawkins. Fitz lets it fly. It rims out a three-point attempt. Kentucky again with another effort. And Kentucky just quicker to the basketball. Vanderbilt has taken a shot, and they are having a hard time recovering early. The Cats defeated Ole Miss this week, their third consecutive SEC victory. So they're hot right now as the bookie straight away, and he drains it a three-pointer. Kentucky running a lot more sets this year. They are a motion-oriented team. But they are running more sets, so Tubby Smith knows where his shots are going to be coming from. The first three by the Wildcats. Kalena Azubuki, a sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, originally from London. Tyrrell on a turnaround, forced to adjust his shot in midair. And Fitch trying to keep Kentucky hot. He does. Right, too easy for Vanderbilt. A bad shot, a challenge shot with the turnaround jumper, and nowhere to go with it. Turns into two Kentucky points on the other end. This is the way Kentucky has piled up 14 wins this season with hot starts just like this. Well, you've got to be strong with the ball against Kentucky. They bump and grind off uh, defensively. They're as strong as any team in the country. They play hard on the defensive end. The Wildcats, for the first time since 1992, do not have a McDonald's All-American on the floor. But they're very talented nonetheless. Chuck Hayes, one of the top five rebounders in the conference. Gerald Fitch, 16 points a game and a super three-point shooter. Fitch is a guy that likes to catch coming off screens. He's more of a catch-and-shoot player. Frigi on a spin. Nice touch. Underneath the basket, and the first two for Vandy. So you talked about it was nine minutes into the second half by the time you scored the first time. Kentucky and Vanderbilt squared off. Kentucky winning that. On the back door and a foul as well. Fitch makes the basket. He'll go to the line. Boy, beautifully designed and very well executed. The ball was in the middle of the floor, so everyone was in denial position. No weak side help. Now for the Vanderbilt Commodores, their star senior Matt Frege. We talked about him, but sophomore guard Mario Moore can also score. He's a streaky shooter. Vandy will score when they're getting going. They're the number two scoring team in the conference at about 77 and a half points a game. Run a Princeton-style offense, a lot of back cuts, back doors. Scott Hunley tried to force a pass underneath. He was looking for the big fella, Shibashevsky. The 7-2 center from Poland. Well, you may have an opening real quick, but it's going to get closed down. Bad pass. Look at Shibashevsky run the floor for the stuff. 7-2-250. And he went end-to-end. -end. The Polish Michael Jordan. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're starting something there. That's the first time I've heard that, though, Jay. Shibashevsky, an outstanding perimeter shooter. 
But that was terrific close defense. Not a very good angle by Cliff Hawkins. That's been the problem for Kentucky, their turnovers. If they don't turn the ball over, they are stellar offensively. 3G trying to shut down Hayes. Stuck right back in, no by Daniels. Boy, nobody got a block out because two guys went to try to block that shot by Chuck Hayes. That's where you have to get rotations. And when you try to block shots, you oftentimes leave the offensive glass exposed. So Kentucky up by five, 16-42 to play in the first half here in Nashville. Vandy started the season off so well, Jay, 12-0, but since they got in the conference, it's been a different story. It has been. And this Kentucky defense is also a different story for Vanderbilt. This is very difficult. They ran a little screen for the screener action. Kentucky likes to double down on the post from out top. Shot clock at five, and it's going to go down anyway by Freegi. He has tremendous touch. The big 6'10 forward buries a three-pointer. He can post. He can step out to the perimeter. One of the tougher matchups in college basketball. He looks like he means to have a very, very different game than the first time he faced Kentucky and did not shoot it well. He went through a tough stretch from December 10th on to about the middle of January. Really had a difficult time, but he has really bounced back his last three. Azubuki tries to glass it. Boy, how about Sivashevsky? Above the rim. Well, when you're 7-2, you can do that, and now he can shoot it. David Shibashevsky. Boy, a lot of coaches are going to start recruiting Poland after this start he's had. <laughs> <laughs> well, rebounding, running the floor, hitting three-pointers. Hawkins looks to answer. Too strong. Well, he thought about it, thought better of it, and usually when you're shooting as an afterthought, it is not a good shot. I'll tell you what, this crowd ready to rock and roll on Freegie's shot. He is fouled, and he has such tremendous touch, Jay. That shot almost went down, but when you're shooting from close range, like David Shibashevsky, look at him jump out, knock the ball away, go end to end. Handles the ball in the full court a terrific job of getting out into the passing lane and then this is where he's really dangerous from 20 feet because he is usually against a bigger guy who's not used to guarding that far out on the floor comes down as the trailer he also likes to space out into the corner and he can knock him down when he gets his feet set you know kentucky also has a seven foot center from poland lukasz orbjuts so he might be facing vandy's seven foot center David Shibashevsky later today, although Orbschut does not play all that much. Yeah, it's not often that Lukasz Orbschut comes into a game and he's the second-best Polish seven-footer. Yeah, that's right, and a little shorter as well. <laughs> he gives up an inch there. Vandy off to a nice start where they needed this. Up by two early over Kentucky. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, presented by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. One of the really fun places to be in college basketball, and that's Memorial Gymnasium here in Nashville. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis. Kentucky, whether the games are here, Jay, or in Lexington, they've flat dominated the series. The last game, 12 points. Kentucky won that. 62 points was the decision last year. Kentucky just embarrassed them. Well, they're used to this kind of atmosphere. They're used to being the hunted, and Vanderbilt faces distractions when they play against a team like Kentucky. More media requests, more ticket requests. But this is a big game for Vanderbilt, not only because of the situation they're in, but because of playing a team like Kentucky. And Matt Frege, it was important for him to get off to a good start. And Frege, I found this out today, he shoots around in warm-ups with the game ball. At the end of warm-ups, he'll come over and give the game ball back to the official scorer. And I've never seen anybody do that before. And it certainly has worked out for him today with the start he's gotten off to. Well, he likes the feel of it. That's pretty obvious. He has six points, and Vandy has a two-point lead on a pretty good run here. And that was after a quick start by the Wildcats. Long jump shot straight away and too short by Fitch, but another second effort for Kentucky. Fitch, when he doesn't have to put the ball on the floor, is much more effective when he gets his shots off the offense rather than creating them. Shibashevsky pushing there on the baseline, 14.45 to play in the first half. Kentucky 4 out of 10. Vandy has not missed from the field. Actually, Vandy's only problems have been in the turnover category. They've had some early turnovers. They got off to a rough start, but were able to come back from it with their efficiency. We saw Tubby Smith there in his seventh season as the Wildcats coach, and he's going to get Cliff Hawkins 
out of the game. Cliff has to walk all the way down to the other end of the court, which is where the Kentucky bench is around the basket. Well, actually, Hawkins going to be taken in and out of this ballgame because of his wind. He's got exercise-induced asthma. And so he has to be subbed out for quite often, and that can be a problem at times for Kentucky. Bottling up, Shemashevsky got in there too, and a foul will go against Vanderbilt, but some pretty stingy defense by the Commodores to deny a good pass. Right now, Josh Carrier into the ball game for Hawkins, and Carrier, a good passer, helps run their offense so he can come in and spell Hawkins. He's one of three Mr. Kentucky basketballs. Three players who have won that award as seniors in high school, including one who plays for Vanderbilt, and that's Scott Hundley, who's a senior guard. And Hundley getting the start today for Corey Smith, who was suspended after that fight in the South Carolina game. And not having Smith takes a really tough physical player out of the lineup for Vanderbilt. Great pass by Chuck Hayes, but taken away by the Commodores. So playing some tough interior defense. Freegee has it high. He can pop out and shoot it from just about anywhere. He just got popped by Chuck Hayes. Now on the topic of getting popped, let's go back to Wednesday. You can see Ronaldo Balkman throws a punch at Corey Smith, and Smith retaliates, and it was fortunate in this particular incident. You can see Balkman throwing that punch. He was charged with a flagrant foul a few days after the game, but luckily in this situation, the benches are on the baseline. Kevin Stallings, his assistant, doing a great job to stop that escalating situation. I think it's a great point. It's one of those situations where it could have really gotten nasty. Corey Smith suspended for today's game. He's a junior starting guard. So far, they haven't needed him. Vandy on a 10-0 run, and it opened up a 14-9 advantage. Boy, after getting punched in the mouth early, turning the ball over a few times, Vanderbilt has really come back strong. That's what character is all about on the floor. Hayes, one of Tubby Smith's favorite players, gets into the lane. Got a good look at the basket on the turnaround. It would not fall for him. It's going to go the other way. Vanderbilt will have possession. 13-27 to go in half number one in Nashville. You know, Dave, you mentioned Chuck Hayes. He's one of my favorite players as well. He is a warrior out on the court. Doesn't care about himself. Cares only about his team. And I know Tubby Smith, happy to have him. But any play, any coach in America would love to have Chuck Hayes. He says, Tubby says of Chuck Hayes, he's our most unselfish player, our hardest worker. And he's the guy we want to speak for our team in good times and in bad. Shemashevsky buries another three. And there he is in that corner. That's where he likes to space. And it is unusual to have a seven-footer that can knock down threes like that. He's hit both of his trays. He has eight points to lead all scorers. Boy, the pressure on the ball by Vanderbilt has been solid. That's too easy, though. Hayes got loose, but it's taken away by the Commodores, and they're going to run when they have the opportunity. That time, Lakey forced the pass into the paint, got it away by the Wildcats, but the big fella can certainly shoot it. He'll step out and put it in the air. Well, it's hard to guard because when you're guarding him and you help out, it's not usual that you're going to have a seven-footer that is going to space out to the corner. Usually you're going to have a seven-footer roll to the basket, and Shibashevsky's a guy, he shot coming into this game, what, 49 threes, but he only had uh, 15 or so free throws. He Look. does not get to the free throw line, but he gets to the three-point line. Oh, and he does, and he hits him too, 41% from three-point distance. Freegy, got it! Three-pointer for Matt Freegy. Look at this. Vandy leads 20-9. to nine. At Notre Dame, they wake up the echoes here at Vanderbilt. They're waking up Barry Goheen. <laughs> <laughs> Goate with it high, swings it to Hawkins. They are really feeding off this crowd, and it looked like a certain traveling violation, but not called, and Eric Daniels tips in the miss. And again, when you go after that block shot, that exposes the offensive glass. One guy can put pressure on the shot. Everybody else has to box. Tommy Smith working hard on his bench, but way on the other end of the floor from where the Wildcats are playing offensively. When they have it in the offensive zone, he's in another zip code. And they cannot stop Shibashevsky. Boy, give credit to the backdoor cut. The backdoor cut by Hundley is what opened it up for Shibashevsky. Make him put it on the floor. How about that for a headline? Kentucky 
can't stop Shibashevsky. I don't know if you can fit it on a newspaper headline. Well, plus the typesetters are going to be going crazy trying to <laughs> spell check that one. Your Microsoft spell check will not work on Shibashevsky. <laughs> You're the only guy in the building that knew how to pronounce that, though, after all your years with Coach K. Muscled up in the miss, no foul. As the bookie went down hard. Hunley driving in, and he commits a charge. An offensive foul against Vandy. For a nice play by Carrier. That's an awfully difficult call to make when you are running down in transition. The man today for the Vanderbilt Commodores, more than Matt Brigi has been, David Shibashevsky, the seven-footer from Poland, on fire. Vandy out in front, 23-11 over Kentucky. David Shibashevsky, certainly the story, Jay. Shibashevsky, an outstanding three-point shooter, but here he is in transition, the big guy going end-to-end -end and throwing it down, but this is where he's really dangerous. And when you let him get off to a good start, now he's got the confidence to keep putting that up. He's going to be even harder to guard. You've got to get out there and make him put it on the floor. He's not quite as effective, but Shibashevsky, David Shibashevsky is what that says there in the eye chart. Well, he looks at the, he looks at an eye chart and says, you know, read it. I know that guy. Well, he had six points when they faced Kentucky a few weeks ago in the loss, already with 11. Fitch denied in the corner, and I think that's a guy they really have to get going offensively. He has four points, 16 points a game coming in. Azubuki with a three-pointer. Kalina Azubuki knocks it back. Azubuki coming off a pretty good game against Notre Dame at 14 points. The last time these two teams played, he had 16 points, 11 rebounds, so he likes playing against Vanderbilt. Vandy on top, 23 to 14. For the Commodores, perhaps no major college program has come so far in one season, Jay. 18 losses last year to a top 25 appearance and a 12-game winning streak to start this season. But, of course, now they're out of the top 25 and badly need this win. Well, you attribute the improvement to the coaching of Kevin Stallings. He's done a great job with this program. And last year was his first losing season ever as a coach. Did a fabulous job at Illinois State. Shibashevsky misses for a change. His first three that does not go down. Vanderbilt will retain possession. We talk about the top turnarounds, and there's Vandy right behind South Carolina. 13 and 4 right now, but how about the game at 18 and 2? Spectacular on the defensive end. They'll press you, but they press you to slow you down and get you out of rhythm, and they press you and still protect the basket. Dave Odom, I think the the hole is greater than the sum of its parts down in Columbia, South Carolina. He's done a really nice job with that team, getting them more confident. Holding foul against Fitch, trying to wrap up Cage. Getting Stallings in his fifth season. He's 43 years old. He pushed his team into the national rankings. They've since dropped out. Two and four in the SEC, and they've lost four of the five conference games they've played. Alerta goes over. No, nope, that's a mistake. That's, yep. that's wrong. It's going to stay right here. He's allowed to do that as he went over the line into the backcourt. So Vanderbilt will retain possession. 10-20 to play in the first half. Great to have you with us from Memorial Gymnasium. Jay Billis, Dave O'Brien. A clash in the conference. The hot shooting Commodores. Shibashevsky down the lane, but he's walking. Well, when you have to put the ball on the floor like that, Shibashevsky is less effective. That's why you want to crowd him. It's just difficult to crowd a shooter and still get weak side help. Kentucky going to a little 1-4 set here. We're halfway through the first half. Vandy has turned it over four more times than Kentucky. That's rather surprising. Fitch got free. That's a tough shot. Oftentimes when Kentucky will run a set, you have to be very careful about the counters they run rather than the main action. The screener oftentimes is the guy that's going to be open rather than the guy coming off the screen. Good pass. It won't go by Mario Moore, but a foul on the play. Mario Moore had a great look underneath the basket. Gerald Fitch, after coming off the little double stagger, able to get Halwerta up in the air. And then on the other end, that is just a terrific backdoor look. Cliff Hawkins losing sight of the ball. Fiji coming back in. Listen to the hand for David Shibashevsky.
Not very often that happens. It's usually Freegy when he comes out that gets the standing O. Now the top scorers in the conference at 18 and a half points a game. He returns to Vandy. Well, 2 3 zone thrown up by Vanderbilt right now. Switching it up. Scooches in the middle. Got some size. Nice of review to jump pass. Sealed on the baseline was Eric Daniels, and he was fouled. Watch as the ball goes down the baseline. Oftentimes, when you get behind the zone, that's the most dangerous place because the defenders have to turn their heads. And Eric Daniels doing a nice job of getting behind that zone. Not sure about that foul. At least uh, our partner, Joe Raffer, would say, Pinnacle Dimer. Orbshoot does get into the ball game for the Wildcats, but Chibashevsky is sitting for the moment. The kick out for Fitch. On the move, Daniels did not dribble in for him and rolled off the rim. Boy, Daniels so good in the middle of his own. He keeps his presence of mind, able to pass the ball as well as to put it up with those long arms. Turnaround shot way too strong by Ted Scooches, his first shot of the game. He's 6'11". Vandy can go big when they want to. Well, Scooches is going to be a good player. He's got a really solid future. Fitch on target. A three-pointer. Gerald Fitch, who shoots 43% career in SEC games from beyond the arc, and Vandy has gone stone cold. Well, that's where Gerald Fitch is really dangerous when he's playing catch-and-shoot basketball, coming off screens. And yeah. Vandy will give it up. They oh. turn the ball over. Alwerta stepped on the sideline and he, as he was trying to get into that move. Oftentimes, guys will throw that foot behind him, and here the nice little skip pass. Fitch ready to shoot as the ball arrives. Knocks it down. So Kentucky has closed the gap big time. They have the ball and trailing by six. And now you have the feeling, and it might be because Shibashevsky stepped out. Looks like a little box and one right now. Hundley on fit. Underneath, shot stuffed in. Orbjuk way up over the basket. Stallings thought he should not have been allowed to touch it. He jumped out onto the court. Boy, this has been a Polish invasion. <laughs> Moore, not there. Kentucky getting every loose ball and every rebound right now. Now trying to run. And Benny needs a timeout. It's a 25 to 23 game in a heartbeat. People don't think of Kentucky as being a transition basketball team, but they really run the floor very effectively. The miss by Daniels Orbjut looked like that ball may have been in the cylinder, but it wasn't up there for very long. Then on the other end, the great transition play. Vanderbilt not getting back effectively at the point of conversion. And Azubuki able to lay it in very easily. Well, tonight ESPN is a full evening of great college basketball. First at 5 Eastern, number one Duke takes on number 16 Georgia Tech. That could be one of the best games of the year. Then at 8 Eastern, ESPN celebrates its 25th season of college basketball. Turning back the clock to 1979, it's Indiana meeting Michigan State. Both teams will be wearing uniforms from the 1979 campaign. Announcers Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale will dress the part as well. And both of them will go back to the days when they had hair. Just what, just what America has been pining for all this time <laughs> is to see Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale in bell bottoms. Can you imagine <laughs> the girls so screaming in the crowd? Oh, it's going to be wild. It'll be like the Beatles. Join us tonight. Hundley with a fadeaway, and it rims out. Well, you think Hundley's fired up for this game? A Kentucky Mr. Basketball always wanted to go to UK. A senior now out of Georgetown, Kentucky, in Scott County. Kentucky getting to the basket, getting great shots right now. Azubuki on the loose has just tied it at 25-25, and all the momentum has gone to the Wildcats just like that, Jay. Kevin Stallings calling out a set. Two down. Blakey with it on the wing. Shibashevsky, good fake to get around. Orange with the pass, and it's deflected. Kentucky blocks it, and now Hayes comes out of there with it. Hundley exposed that ball when he went up. Hayes down the lane, and he's fouled by the seven-footer. Well, how about the challenge at the summit? Chuck Hayes taking that ball in to dunk it, no question about that. And David Shibashevsky 
Coming over from the weak side. The Eastern Block! <laughs> Stallings again on the court. Pretty fierce on that end as Hayes hits the first one. And nothing phases Chuck Hayes. Tom Izzo coached him this summer with the U.S. national team and absolutely raved about Chuck Hayes. Not a better team guy in the country. Stallings thought that was a clean block. The whistle did not go his way, and everything's going Kentucky's way. The Wildcats lead by two, 6.39 to go in the first half. Carl Ravitch in our college basketball studios. Carolina looking for its first ACC road win of the season. Tough going against Clemson. Shea Christie buries a three. They've since buried another one, and they now have a six-point lead. Back in Nashville, Vandy has fallen behind by two to number five, Kentucky. Vandy, about six minutes ago, had a 12-point lead. That has disappeared. Kevin Stallings is wondering where the heck it went as Kentucky is up by two, 6.37 to go in the half. Well, you know you're not going to hold Kentucky down for an entire ball game. They're just too good. But one thing I know Kevin Stallings has to be pleased with is the fact that Vanderbilt did not let Kentucky get out to its usual big lead on the road. Bandy tying it at 27. Tubby Smith liberally using his bench. That's not something Kentucky has been noted for this year. Their starters get most of the minutes by a whopping amount. Although that's not terribly unusual in the college game. But he is starting to get in some people. Shigari Aline is now to the ball game. He wears number 21, another seven-footer. We've had three of them on the court already in this first half. Andy back to man-to-man, -to -man, and Chuck Hayes with that left arm just pushing off to set up a spin move, and that'll be an offensive foul. Vandy a little more aggressive in their man-to-man -man than they were in the zone or that box and one for a couple of possessions. A win today for Tubby Smith would be career victory number 303. He gets Hawkins back in. Of course, Kentucky won the national title under Tubby Smith in 1998. Boy, how about that accomplishment? Not, the, not just the 98 title, but the fact that in 96, 97, 98, Kentucky went to three straight championship games, an overtime period away from a three-peat. That's unbelievable. Hunley lets it fly. He missed badly. Maybe trying to do too much, the kid from Kentucky, here in his senior season, but he picks it off. Hunley, one dribble down. He was fouled on the play. So Scott Hundley will step to the line to shoot. Well, you want to talk about one weakness of these Kentucky Wildcats. They are at times a little loose with the basketball. They can be very efficient at times. Other times, they tend not to value it. And a nice little two-on-one break. Gerald Fitch having to come across the body of Hundley and commit the foul. You know, without Corey Smith in there, Dave, Hundley had to start this ball game, And it's not so much replacing Smith as it is who's going to replace Hundley to be the energy guy off the bench to add that depth and that experience. Hundley got both. We talked about three Mr. Kentucky basketballers on the court. The others, Brandon Stockton and Josh Carrier of Kentucky. And Hundley will take a seat on Stallings bench here with 5.28 to go in the half. Pretty good passing lineup in the ball game right now for Kentucky, not only with Hawkins in the game, but Fitch and Daniels. Fitch can't shoot it. Trying to use that screen by Orbjut and a pushing foul against Vanderbilt. Shibashevsky, 5-14 on the clock. Shibashevsky is so big and strong when he shows out on one of those ball screens, well, he can knock you back into the second row just by accident. Well, he got off to a fantastic start, but he's picked up his third personal. He has to come out of the game. So Stallings has to sit down the guy who's been his offensive force. 11 points here in the first half. They've got to keep looking to Matt Frege and make sure he stays involved. Fitch with a three. Another second effort. The Wildcats have had a bunch of those in the first half. Well, Adam Payton trying to leak out early for Vanderbilt. He needs to get in there and rebound with the rest of them. Got to have all five guys going to the defensive boards. Fitch nearly gave it up. Shot clock at 18. Azabuki weaving his way in. Tip to the baseline. Saved by Vanderbilt. Everyone else had given up on it. 
But Peyton went sprawling over that baseline. And Terrell had given up on it. He just turned his back. Freegy luckily alert for Vandy. Terrell on the low post. Forced it. Freegy fires up a wild shot. 425 to go in half number one. Vanderbilt has had a lot of opportunities that they haven't been able to put in underneath the basket, but what a save and great hustle by Peyton here, and watch Terrell. He just kind of turns around, the ball goes right by his feet, and Freegy alertly picks it up, but Terrell thought that there was no way that that ball was going to be saved. Well, that's the kind of effort that Vandy was getting throughout the early games of the season when they were 12-0. Vandy has not been to the NCAA tournament since 1997. They haven't won a game in the tournament since Eddie Fogler was the coach here in 93. He took them to the Sweet 16. But last year, they really hit the bottom, losing 18 games, including a 62-point blowout loss last March at Rupp Arena in Lexington. Well, that's happened to a few teams over the years. It's awfully difficult to play in rep, but they were certainly better than that. Fiji's hook no good. He gets it back in the paint, tries it again. 0 for 2 on those. A Kentucky staying big, staying between their man and the basket along the line of the ball with Tubby Smith's ball line defense. This is a great half-court defensive team. Not good, but great. Pitch finds Daniels out high. He'll let it fly. Over the back, Orbju pushing on Fuji. A foul against Kentucky. Fuji getting a little bit frustrated on the other end, Jay. Well, Matt Fuji, such a big part of this offense, and Eric Daniels behind him in the post and just stays big there. Does a nice job of making Matt Fuji shoot over the top. And sometimes, as a defender, you're not always going to be able to discourage the pass into the post, and guys are going to grab some offensive rebounds. But if you can make their shots just a little bit tougher, they'll be less effective. And that's the case with Matt Fuji. Fuji on pace to become his school's all-time leading scorer. He was the preseason SEC Player of the Year. Not bad for a guy who is not heavily recruited out of Shawnee Mission West High near the Kansas Jayhawks campus. That was his favorite team growing up, but they did not recruit him. His final choices were Northwestern, Utah, Iowa State, and Vanderbilt. He was part of Stalling's very first recruiting class, and he is trying to lead them back to the top 25 where they resided just a couple of weeks ago. Vandy in the lead. Coming up on the Halftime Report, Andy Katz joins me, and there are two unbeatens right now, St. Joe's and Stanford. Last year, Stanford went to Oregon and lost. Can they do that again? Well, they may, because it won't be easy without one of their starters today in Eugene. I'll tell you who that is and bring you the highlights of Carolina. They're in action right now against Clemson, Ohio State, and Purdue playing as well. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to halftime. Right now, Vanderbilt with a 31-29 lead over Kentucky, 3.46 to play in the first half here in Nashville. I think most college basketball fans are aware, Jay, of the unusual vantage point the benches have in this arena inside Memorial Gymnasium. You are, too, because you played here in your playing days at Duke, did you not? Yeah, it was a difficult place to play, not only because of the background, and it's a tough place to shoot if you're not used to it, but having your coaches on top of you on one end and so far away on the other can be a little bit unsettling. I remember thinking, hey, let's turn it over so we can run down to the other end because <laughs> Coach K is killing me. That's Tubby's, Tubby's a view from way down the other end. I mean, his guys cannot hear him. He has to get up and jump up and down and wave his arms and... I mean, I'm, I'm surprised they don't use giant placards for crying out loud to signal the next play what they want to run. And the other thing that's tough about this building is it's loud. The Memorial Maniacs get it going. Hawkins in the paint, can't get it to go down, and a foul in the rebound. 3.15 left in half number one. Boy, that's a big-time rebound by Terrell. He's got to have a big game on the glass for Vanderbilt to win this ball game because Kentucky has the potential to really beat you up on the glass. Freegy going for the block and Terrell going in there. I'll tell you, that's a big-time board right there. Terrell, a local guy out of Nashville, solid rebounder, but coming off a very quiet four points and three rebounds, playing 20 minutes in the game against South Carolina here this week, and they lost that game. Vandy did by two. That was a heartbreaking defeat. Corey Smith out of the lineup today, a starting guard, important guy for Vanderbilt, even though he's not a big scorer, he was suspended because of a fight in that game. Well, he's a big body, and a guy who can take a lot of punishment and dish out a lot of punishment, and just shortens that bench for Vanderbilt a bit, and...
put Scott Hundley in a little bit of a different spot having to be a starter. They're going to miss his energy coming off the bench because it's already in the lineup to start. I'm just thinking watching Tubby Smith's view from way down the other end. Were there times you just completely ignored Coach Krzyzewski during the course of the game? It was hard because he spent most of the 40 minutes yelling at me. <laughs> You brought that on yourself. Fitch from the corner. <laughs> and Fiji yanks down the rebound. Matt Fiji, the 6'10 forward from Overland Park, Kansas. They want Tyrrell underneath. He'll kick it out. Cage, good fake to get free, but he didn't shoot it. And Fiji had a much more difficult time trying to get off a shot. He couldn't. They're looking for Fiji. They're all American candidate. Gets two. Boy, good patience by Vanderbilt because Kentucky defended their penetrate and pitch very effectively. Good closeouts. And Vanderbilt, who had been struggling, they were, what, one for their last 11. Getting one to drop close in by getting the ball to Matt Friedman. Now it's the Wildcats in a drought. Well, everything on one side for Kentucky. And Scotte swatted away, but count the basket. That'll be a goaltend on Tyrrell. Boy, that wasn't going to go in either. I thought that was going to be short. That's where right. Tyrrell should have let go. See, Cote getting Fregi into the air. Well, maybe it would have gone in. I thought it was going to be short from our vantage point, but we will never know. Our vantage point from underneath the floor on the other side. Yeah. Everything looks on the way up from here. It sure does. Good move. Terrell stuffs in two. Boy, your man gets up over the top of you. You're taught to back cut. And Terrell with a beautiful read of the defense. So Vandy opens up a little bit of breathing room. 37 to 31. That one off the top of the backboard of the pair. Cote going down. And he's fouled. Let's go back to that slam on the other end. Here's the vantage point Tubby Smith had when Terrell made the back cut. You can see Cote just gets caught above Terrell and throwing it down on the Wildcats. Tubby Smith usually not that close. And I know he doesn't like the view. Bernard Cote at the line, the sophomore from Quebec. And he has really emerged as one of Kentucky's top reserves over the last month. And that's pretty much the view that we have, although significantly lower. We're right at court level. One of the most unusual spots you're ever going to broadcast a game from. Reminds you a little bit of Williams Arena at the University of Minnesota, the fact you're eye level. But this, uh, this Memorial Gymnasium, very much like a theater. Theater seating, it's a beautiful place, a lot of character, and it can get loud. Oh, man, can it ever, and it has been today completely sold out. Howerta doesn't take many. Jason Howerta can't get it to go. Kentucky to fly. Daniels around the back. Gives it up to Azubuki in traffic. The tip misses. Vandy comes down with it. Coming up on one minute to go. Well, yet another opportunity in transition Kentucky's not able to capitalize on. Lakey got the basket. Boy, it looked like for all the world it was going to spin out. But the rim held it. And he can have a three-point play. One of the first rules, Dave, of transition defense, stop the basketball. Nobody stop Russell Lakey. And he got all the way to the rim. Cote a little bit too far underneath to be able to take that charge. And he did try to stick his right side up underneath, moving just a little bit. A terrific play by Lakey to get it to go down. Lakey, a senior from Los Angeles, makes it a three-point effort. He's a senior who plays behind a sophomore, Mario Moore, but... Stalling says he never complains. He just goes out and does his job. Big basket. Big three-point play there to make it a seven-point lead for the Commodores. Kentucky had a chance for a two-for-one, but they just needed to get something good and did. So Vanderbilt can hold it for one shot and take it all the way down. Daniels basket. 40-35 to 35 the score. Going to a 2-3 set, trying to take him out top, get something back door. If you get a layup, go ahead and take it. Otherwise, save it to shoot it at about four seconds. They have the chance at an offensive rebound, but Kentucky doesn't have a chance to take it the other way. Fregi with it. He's going to have to shoot it. Fires it. It's short. And that's how the first half comes to an end here in Nashville. Vanderbilt with a 40-35 to 35 lead. Coming up on the budget, rent-a-car halftime report with Carl Ravage. 
the Rick Pitino update. Andy Katz will be with us live and scores and highlights. That's coming up on the Budget Rent-A-Car Halftime Report. 40-35, Andy has the lead over number five, Kentucky, at halftime. Let's go to Carl Ravage. Carl, thank you very much. Vanderbilt with a 40 to 35 lead over number five, Kentucky, as we're ready for the second half inside Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville. Dave O'Brien, Jay Billis. I don't know what time it is in Poland right now. This game started at 11 a.m. local time, but it was Shibashevsky time in the first half. He had 11 points. Well, the seven-footer, an outstanding three-point shooter, and he hit his first view, had a great play taking it in transition. David Shibashevsky helped Vanderbilt get off to that good start and stop Kentucky from getting off to their good start. He shoots more threes than he does free throws. Unusual for a seven-footer, but the second chance points are what's kept Kentucky in it. When they've missed shots inside, they've been able to clean up a few of them with the offensive rebounds. Eric Daniels got one, Orb Jute got another one. And you take a look at these stats. Vanderbilt shooting 50% in the first half. Kentucky gonna try to pick up that defense. And Dave, if you remember last year, Kentucky came into this game at Vanderbilt and really found themselves at halftime, came out after halftime with a completely different defensive mindset that carried them to 26 consecutive wins after this ballgame. Our first half stats brought to you by Labatt Blue Frigi had a good first half, 13 points, came on late. At one point, Vanderbilt had a 12-point lead. They gave that up. Kentucky went in front. In the closing minutes of the first half, Tubby Smith saw his team fall behind, and so we're ready for the second 20. And it's 40-35 Vanderbilt as Kentucky has the basketball to get the second half started. Sold out. Memorial Gymnasium sold out for the last couple of weeks. They have been very loud at times. Daniels banks in two. Nobody came to double team. Matt Friedge tried to get down there a little bit late. But Daniels, a left-hander, went over that right shoulder. He has eight points. And gets the first two of the second half. And Mario Moore caught with a push off there. Cliff Hawkins doing a very nice job of getting big time pressure on the ball in the backcourt. And that's how Kentucky is going to win ball games. Not only with solid offensive execution, but their defense can be stellar. Just getting started here in the second half. 30 seconds in. Daniels. Vanderbilt's been going under those ball screens, Dave, so Cliff Hawkins going to have to start thinking about pulling the trigger on a shot. Fitch with the catch up high. Hawkins down low, gets triple team. Azubuki with a fadeaway jumper. Up and off by Daniels. Now he gets it back, lays it in. So he has struck for the first four of the second half. A terrific offensive rebound, not only by Hayes, but also Hawkins getting in there and the easy dish off and I'll tell you what Eric Daniels gets the ball up on the glass very quickly doesn't waste a lot of time gathering himself so Vandy's lead has been cut quickly to one good pass Tyrrell blocked and fouled on the play Hayes came over to defend Watch Tubby's reaction on the Kentucky basket on the other end of the floor. Boy, it's all blue underneath that basket. And Cliff Hawkins with the nice little pass, and Tubby Smith enjoying it. But he wants his team to get up and put some pressure in the backcourt. Tubby will not have much of a voice left with all the screaming he has to do from way down the other end. It's in and out by Tyrrell. And the first half for Vanderbilt. It was three-point shooting and free throws. 28 of their points came off threes or the free throw line. Vandy, an excellent foul shooting team. Second best in the conference at 73%. Tyrrell working on Hayes. Hundley wants it. A mismatch there with Fitch, but he kicks to the corner. Alberta can't get a shot. Shot clock at 13. Well, nothing is available. Moore is open. But it won't fall, and Hayes comes away with a rebound for Kentucky. What a defensive possession for Kentucky. Scoop shot up. No good by Daniels. Azubuki follows. The best offense that Kentucky has put up has been a missed shot. They are crashing the offensive glass, and it's paying off. They have retaken the lead 41 to 40.
Hundley back it in, fading away, and it won't hang on the rim for him. It would not fall through the cylinder. And Kevin Stallings going to put in a new five at the next dead ball. An entire new lineup for the Vanderbilt coach ready to check in. Fitch in and out for him. Obviously, Stallings does not like the tone of the first several minutes of the second half. Well, they need to push the ball up the floor a little bit. It'd be nice to beat this Kentucky half-court defense down the floor from time to time. Zero close range, misfiring. Vandy has yet to score in the second half. Daniel stops, and Vandy needs a timeout. They'll take one right now. Less than three minutes into the second half, their five-point lead has completely disappeared, and it's an eight-point swing Kentucky's way. Daniels, who was terrific Wednesday night, getting hot again here in Nashville. Three minutes into the second half, Kentucky reverses things. They're back out in front. College basketball's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light on ESPN, highlighted by two games. First at 7 Eastern, number 22 Syracuse will be number 8 UConn. And at 9 Eastern, it's Missouri against the 12th-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. All part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN and ESPN2. ESPN2 game track. Now Daniels has 12. He's gotten hot real quick here in the second half. Frees you with 13 points. Hawkins hounding Lakey in the backcourt, but he brings it across. Uh, Kentucky with their pressure. Look how much further out Vanderbilt's having to run their offense. They reversed it and got something good inside. But they're really have to, having to start out further from the basket. That means your passes are further away. And help side defense has a lot more time to catch up to you. Chuck Hayes with a foul. So he's going to have to step out for Tubby Smith. And Orbjut will come back in. Wukash Orbjut. A 7-1, 257-pounder from Poland. And Shibashevsky is back in there, too. Davi Shibashevsky, also from Poland, who is scalding hot in the first half. He had 11 points, then picked up his third foul and disappeared. Lakey flies through the lane and spins in two. The first two points of the second half for the Commodores. All right, Lakey in the first half, sliding by a defender in transition, and then sliding by a bigger man there to get that to go down off the glass. That's pretty. Kentucky has thoroughly dominated the series going back decades, including a 62-point blowout of Vanderbilt last year. Beat them by 12 three weeks ago. It's the 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds situation. Lakey penetrating in, and Orbjut comes over, and Lakey just able to slide right past him. Now, Vandy looking for a little bit of energy from somebody other than Corey Smith, their junior guard, because Smith is not available today, suspended because of a fight on Wednesday in a game against South Carolina here in Nashville. Fitz nice double move. team. Yep, he got free though. Orbjut right there. Right on the money. One thing that traditionally European players do very well is shoot the ball. Well, Orbjut and Shibashevsky are proving that to be true here today in Tennessee. Switch is giving off to Lakey. Three pointer on the way. Too strong. Shibashevsky tried to keep it alive. Batted it right to Hawkins. He weaves his way in. Left-handed for two. Boy, what a great move. Again, Vanderbilt having a very difficult time stopping the ball in transition. And Kentucky not known generally as a transition team, but they do push the ball up the floor. They put a lot of pressure on your defense at the point of conversion. Cliff Hawkins, a sixth man last year for Kentucky, got a lot of playing time. Now the everyday point guard and number two in the league in assists, but... Very quick getting to the basket for that hoop. 47 to 42, Kentucky. 15.02 left. Orbs, you just tried to blow through that pick. Picked up the foul. Timeout. Kentucky has taken over here in the second half. A five point lead. Hawkins on the drive for a pretty two points for the Wildcats. And look at the SEC standings. Kentucky 4-1 in the Eastern Division right by in South Carolina. Look at Vandy's overall record at 13-4, and four, and you realize that all of their losses have come inside the conference. Every team in this league has a winning record overall, and I know the ACC is having a great year, the Big East. I find it hard to believe that there's a better conference top to bottom than the Southeastern Conference. 
Offense on the catch in the backcourt. And the fourth court and laid up and in for two. And Kentucky able to strike virtually at will here in the first five or six minutes of the second half, Jay. Well, Dave, that's how you lose ball games. You lollipop a, a pass like that. And that was basically an outlet pass to start Kentucky's break. Got to do a better job on the out-of-bounds underneath of setting screens to free yourself up. And there is no way you can rainbow a ball like that and expect it to get to its destination. Vanderbilt shot 50% in the first half. They've made just one out of five in the second. Kentucky getting up a lot more shots as well. And a lot of that on second efforts hitting the offensive boards. Carrier will come in. And Hawkins will hit the bench. Isn't it funny, though? So you look at shooting percentages and you think about offensive execution, but I think this Kentucky team, they feed off their defense. When they get down in the stance and really guard you, their offense is better. Knocked down out of the hands of number 54, Ted Scuchus, as he turned to try and shoot from about 15 feet. And that ball almost went in the basket. <laughs> Nearly did. But Scuchus, a shooting foul, will go to the line for two. You can see Eric Daniels reached in from behind here and just about knocked that ball in. Try that in a horse game. You'll win every time. <laughs> Scuchus, 6'11". Out of the state of Pennsylvania. Actually redshirted last year after consulting with Randy Ayers, the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers. Ted actually attended Germantown Academy in Pennsylvania with their son, Ryan. So the families are close. Also played with Matt Walsh of Florida on that team and Lee Melchione, a reserve at Duke. Pretty not darn good high not school a team. bad group at all. That's absolutely true. I wonder how you lose a game with talent like that. I'm sure the coach appreciates you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> the letter on the way. Carrier. <laughs> now to Azubuki on the wing. Well, Kentucky very deliberate. Great pass. See, Kentucky runs so much of its offense through its big guys. You can get it into Daniels if he's double teamed. He knows how to make that pass effectively, as does Chuck Hayes. 51 to 43. Vandy trying to find an answer. They had all sorts of answers in the first half and led by five at halftime. Payton has a knock out of bounds, swatted right off the court by Bernard Cote. Oh, Canada! Bernard Cote from Quebec carrying the flag. Eric Daniels will come out of the ball game and Forbes shoot back in. Watch, here comes the double team, the great look. Watch how he's looking over his shoulder there. That's great awareness. Not many big guys are able to pass that effectively out of the low post. Defense by Kentucky again on the interior pass. They have a 16-3 run going right now in the second half. Well, good job by Azubuki on the defensive end to knock that ball away. And that was an opportunistic three. He didn't make it, but still a good shot. Shibashevsky can't get it. Azubuki pushed on the baseline as he started his move. Where this transition game for Kentucky is starting to wear down Vanderbilt a little bit. They're getting the ball down court quickly, and Azubuki with a heads-up play. He saw he had a step on his man and turned right into him and created that foul. Azubuki was a big-time scorer in high school out of the state of Oklahoma. Led that state in scoring. And he's hitting about 42% of his three-point shots. A wonderful athlete. He can beat you several different ways. You made the point earlier, we, we talked about Kentucky, they don't have a McDonald's All-American on the floor for the first time in over a decade, and yet this is a very gifted basketball team. It really is a good team because they play so hard. And you know, one of the things that coaches will ask other coaches, guys like Tubby Smith, is how do you get your guys to play so hard? And Kentucky, even though they may have a reputation by some of being a, a pressing team back from the Rick Pitino days, this is a smash-mouth defensive team in the half court. And Russell Lakey has made perhaps the hardest shots of any player in this ballgame. That's right. He's put down two or three shots just like that, which had no business falling. Shibashevsky cradling the rebound. Boy, that's a bad shot by Azubu. He can make it, but make Vanderbilt guard you. Moore lost it. Did he save it? 
Indeed he did, tipped by Kentucky. Well, you take a quick shot like that, and that's how you see leads disappear. And nobody was happier with that shot by Azubuki than Kevin Starlings was. Antoine Barber will enter the game for Tubby Smith, and Azubuki comes out, and I think that might be at least something to do with the shot he just cast up there, not a shot that Tubby Smith wanted. Well, taking a bad shot is usually the best route to being an assistant coach. <laughs> the big fella. Tipped up and in by Freeju with the right hand. He got there and tipped it in. Freeju not known as being a great rebounder, but when he puts his mind to it, he can get to the glass. About six rebounds a game, and he's 6'10". He sure can shoot it, and they need offense from that man. 15 points for him. The shot by Shibashevsky. Usually a long shot equals a long rebound, but Shibashevsky has a nice touch, and so does Matt Frigi. Softly with the right hand, getting out to drop. Fitch, a catch and shoot. Shibashevsky crashing the glass hard now. Boy, this is as strong as Shibashevsky's played all season. More inside for two. That's the energy Vanderbilt needs if they're going to come back on Kentucky and is starting to do it. Boy, more pointing at his bench after that play. Somebody must have told him to be more aggressive, and he was given a little thank you after that. Fitch, the little guy, gave off the rebound, but he was traveling with it. Turnover, Kentucky. It's tightened up, 53-49, Kentucky. But Vandy looking for Mario Moore to give them some instant offense, and the 5'11 sophomore delivers on the drive. A good one here to the second half. Kentucky leading by four over Vanderbilt. And tonight, ESPN is a full evening of great college basketball. First at five, number one Duke takes on number 16 Georgia Tech. That can be a great basketball game. Then at nine Eastern, ESPN celebrates its 25th season of NCAA basketball by turning back the clock to 1979. Indiana and Michigan State, both teams will be wearing uniforms from the 1979 season. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. This guy with a Larry Bird kind of a touch from the outside, Matt Frege. Trying to get going. He has 15 points on five out of nine shooting, and he's knocked down two three-pointers. The only thing he's gotten in the second half has been that tip-in. Everything for Vanderbilt, it's going to be handoffs or backdoor cuts. Moore gives out. Blakey can't find the range. Mario Moore has been a little bit more aggressive in this second half, trying to find things off the dribble. Usually he's a great barometer for this team. As he goes, so goes Vanderbilt. Barber very nearly gave it up. Okay, Russell Lakey has played hard in this ballgame. Gets steals and assists for this team, can run the team, but boy, that's giving up your body going after it. 10.48 to go, second half. Vanderbilt had a five-point lead at halftime. They gave it up. Now the momentum has swung the Commodore's way. Lakey pushed, and he will go to the line if he was in the act of shooting. Looked like he was trying to fire it up there. He's aggressive, too. Boy, that's a smart play by Russell Lakey. And you know you're smart. He went to Harvard-Westlake in Los Angeles, California. From Harvard to Vanderbilt. <laughs> nice choice. Blakey shooting two. 53-49 Kentucky, the number five team in the country. They defeated Ole Miss this week for their third straight SEC win. Or shoot with his fourth personal foul. And Kevin Stallings has to recruit a lot of smart kids to this Vanderbilt program. An outstanding school. Their huddles are like Mensa meetings. <laughs> they have a Mensa room right next to the men's room <laughs> here at Memorial Gymnasium. I hit the men's room, not the men's room at halftime. I'll have you know. 7 0 the Vandy run. And they pulled it within three. Crowd starting to get active again. 
Every seat taken this afternoon. Actually, it was a morning start, 11 a.m. local time here in Nashville, Tennessee. Coaching staff telling their players, go to bed, ready to play. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Well, it's awfully difficult. It's not comfortable to be sleeping in your jock. <laughs> we, we all here on press roll will take your word for that, Jay Billis. Shibashevsky trying to fade away. Faded away a little too much. So he had such a hot hand in the first half, he has cooled off significantly in the second. A little flex cut underneath. Pretty good pressure on the ball by Vanderbilt. Keeping their hands up. Discouraging those passes. Oftentimes, if you just keep your hands up, you great look. Fitch fighting for it. Swatted out of bounds. Vandy denying in the paint. Kentucky getting second chance opportunities. That is a threaded needle to Gerald Fitch. Just cutting to the back door, and again, the Eastern block. Shibashevsky batting it several rows into the crowd. 9.32 on the clock. You get the feeling Vandy is waiting for a Matt Fuji explosion of points. He's had sporadic success. 15 points. And in fact, he leads all scorers, but they would love him to try and take over this game. I think this is where you have to be strong mentally if you're Vanderbilt. Coming down the stretch, you have to make winning plays, and that's been a difficulty for them over their last five or six ball games. They've been in the games they've been playing in, but have not been strong down the stretch, and that's really been the difference. Lost a heartbreaker Wednesday night to South Carolina, 57-55, right on this court. Azubuki, a fake. Crowd thought travel. Fitch is open. Another offensive board. Daniels again. Well, Daniels is such a smart player. When he's in the right spot time after time, you got to start wondering, it must be his intelligence. It certainly can't be luck. He's a senior, very consistent performer, the Cats' number two scorer. He's number two in just about every category for Kentucky. That's right, has it now. Nice Pulls pass. Up. Hayes can't handle it, though. Shot clock is at seven. Hawkins again finds Fitch. He's missed two in a row from there. It's set on the rim. Asabuki's follow would not drop. Boy, how many opportunities can Kentucky get? But Hundley able to save them. It looked like it was going to be an easy putback by Asabuki. Scooches with the hook shot. And the crowd hollering for Scooches 53-52. This could be a dandy down the stretch. The last eight minutes coming up. Too easy. Block the block screen wide open. Got to get through that. Hayes on the reverse for Kentucky. But Kentucky just executes. They're a bunch of men out on the floor. Well, Fitch is senior. Daniels is senior. Hayes is a junior. Cliff Hawkins, when he's on the court, he's a senior. And he's out there now for Tubby Smith. And nothing phases these guys to great demeanors. They're just used to being the show every time they come into town. It's a distraction for the other team, but this is the bubble they live in. Shot clock down to four, and it's off the back iron, but it came out to Hundley. And a new shot clock for Vanderbilt. Fuji cutting through. Hundley gets a screen. Well, I'm not sure who's more disappointed by that offensive rebound, Kentucky or Vanderbilt. Now Kentucky's got to go, or Vanderbilt's got to go against this defense for 35 more seconds. Well, that's exactly right. The last time they shot shot clock was at four. It's inside 10 seconds again on the second possession. Fuji missed everything. What team in America can play 70 seconds of defense like that? Boy, a very, very impressive. Two defensive stops by Kentucky right there. And that team just played 70 seconds of defense. That's strong. I think Tubby took a break just to give his guys a breather. 55-52.
And as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, it's time to flash back into the ESPN archives. 4.4 seconds left, full court pressure. Kentucky's got a chance to win if they score. Muhammad drives and lays it up off glass. Wait a minute, it's good! The officials say it's good! Nazi Muhammad with the lob shot. Total dejection for the Vanderbilt Commodores who had overtime in their sights. In this case, the mountain came to Muhammad. Do you remember how that one ended? And it ended like so many Vanderbilt Kentucky games have in the past with a Wildcat victory and a long faced Commodores team. The excuse me kiss off the glass by Nazi Muhammad, whose brother Al Haji plays at Louisville. How will this one end in Nashville today? 55 52. Kentucky with the ball in the lead. I think even Vanderbilt has to be wondering, will we be able to make plays at the end of this game? They are mentally strong enough to do it. They just have to do it. Shot clock at four. Hayes. He was denied on that shot. Which did not touch the rim. So three seconds to shoot and a timeout. Kentucky leading by three. 6-16 to play inside Memorial Gymnasium. All right, Carl, thank you. We're having a lot of fun in Nashville as we get a look at our ESPN2 game track. It's brought to you by KFC. Fitch now with 13 points. Vanderbilt got a lot of early points out of their big seven-footer from Poland. He's been quiet since, and really Matt Frege has picked up the scoring with 15 points. He came in averaging 18 and a half per contest. There's three on the shot clock. Got to get a quick shot here. Vanderbilt might want a face guard to keep it from going in too easily. Now's a rookie to check in. Hawkins with the catch and shoots. It comes to Frege. And for Kentucky in the second half, the original recipe has been defense. Beautiful segue. You you're, like that? You're a company man all the way. A lifetime supply of popcorn chicken for you. <laughs> Lakey handling a three-pointer will tie it up for Vandy. More packing it out to get a better look inside. But the shot clock has dwindled down to five. All in an open set. His back shot not there. Scooch is all oh, close range. You can't get any closer. And he could not buy it. By Mario Moore with the floater. And Scooches with as close a look as you're going to get. Scooches with the smooches off the glass. Just can't get it to go down. Five like that. and a half minutes to go in this one, Jay. That can really deflate you. Yes. You, know, you. You could feel everybody taking a sigh in this building. When you can't get that kind of shot to go down, it makes you start to wonder. You make that, it pulls you to win one point. And you've got Kentucky all of a sudden on their heels. Still three points worth of breathing room for the Wildcats. Now Free it's Kentucky running some clock down. Freezy doing a nice job playing post defense. Back shot is good. So despite the good D, Kentucky breaks through for two more, 57-52. Well, it has been so hard for this Vanderbilt team to run anything coherent. And he gets Freegy with a nice screen. Again from close range. This time Freegy can't score. Well, you can't get any better opportunities than Vanderbilt's got the last two or three times down the floor. So the lead at five for the Cats. Another set. Kentucky calls a lot of set plays. Great pass. Daniels, no basket. But to the line, he will go. Eric Daniels, the senior from Cincinnati. A nice job by Cliff Hawkins of curling off that screen. And then dumping it on the other end. Uh, down, on, but down on the other end, see Matt Frege. You're not going to get many better opportunities than that. He just couldn't get it to go down off the glass. Shot it a little bit too hard. Another one coming for Daniels. The number five Kentucky Wildcats trying to hang on the last four and a half minutes and go to 15 and two. Scooters coming out, Lakey coming out. Daniels with a dozen points on the day and makes a foul shot. And it's a six point advantage. You almost think this Kentucky team 
revels in playing on the road, that they enjoy it more than playing at Ralph. They know exactly what to expect. Very hostile environment. Packed houses everywhere they play. But that's why they come to Kentucky. You know, kids will say, you know, I love the challenge of playing on the road. And everybody says that. Not many people step up and do it. And Azubuki looked like he was there. That was a pretty darn good step in, laying his body on the line. You have to really see the basketball. You can see Azubuki, if he sees the ball, he would have gotten there a little bit quicker. I thought he was there. That's pretty darn good. But give Cage credit for taking it hard to the basket and creating that contact. Bandy, an excellent foul shooting club. Second best in the SEC, 73% overall. 4.09 to go, and it's a four point game. Lakey in, more out. Moore gave them a nice jump start for a couple of minutes. But it was the bunnies underneath that Vanderbilt could not convert. That's haunting them right now. Four minutes to go, a very close game. Let's see what Vanderbilt is made of right now. Hayes high on the glass with a bank shot and missed it. Another second effort, though, by the Wildcats. That's been the story all day. Vanderbilt's been going after blocked shots, and there has not been consistent rotation down to be able to box out. Hayes moves in. Daniels won't shoot from there. Azubuki will. Outletting to Huntley. He will not try to take on Fitch one-on-one. -on -one. Good pass. Shudoshevsky with the hook shot. That's a good-looking shot for him. That little rhythm dribble. Well, he's got a nice, skilled game. Not known for his interior game, more for his perimeter game. Hawkins, left three, bangs in two from the foul line. Boy, that young man, not a great shooter, but he certainly hits big shots, none bigger than the one you saw against Tennessee, where he stepped behind a screen and knocked it down. And way beyond the three-point arc in that win in overtime against the Volunteers. Fiji follows his miss for two points. And now the building is absolutely filled with noise. 60-58, Kentucky by two. It's just a question now, Dave, of who is tougher. Huntley with the steal. Randy can tie or take the lead on this possession. Boy, that's nice. Screen for the screener. The Commodores lead at home. 61-60. Faking. Batted away by Lakey. He could not collect it. Shot clock is at four. Azubuki. Off the rim and a foul in the paint. It goes against Kentucky with a minute 40 on the clock. Boy, what a terrific defensive job by Vanderbilt. After Lakey went on the floor, it was five on four. But when Vanderbilt needed to get the big rebound, everybody went to the glass. Look how they're boxing out. What a great job by Matt Frege to hold off Chuck Hayes. Hayes comes away with the rebound, or with the foul, excuse me. That's a great job by Matt Frege. Boy, when your All-American does it down on the defensive end, that's special. He's 85% at the line. The foul on Chuck Hayes was his fourth. And that's a guy who's a heart and soul kind of a player for Tubby Smith. Well, Kevin Stallings talked to me yesterday about winning plays in the last four minutes. And so far, Vanderbilt has made winning plays. He missed the second. A two-point lead for Vandy. With 90 seconds left, Vandy on a 10-2 run. Vanderbilt's defense has got to stay aggressive and Fitch is a guy you still have to watch. He's the one that can make the perimeter shot. 
Hawkins off the screen, sealed. Got it away to Daniels. Pitch baseline. Shot clock at five for Kentucky. They got to get it up. Hawkins can't. Out of bounds. Vandy has it. A minute five to go in Nashville, and it's Vandy by two. 57. Carl, not plenty of time in this one. Kentucky trailing by two to Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt trying to reverse a trend in this game. In the last four minutes of games, they have been giving up some leads and allowing teams to really take off on them. They haven't allowed that in this ball game, and now with the chance to win it, just a minute five to go, and the ball. One thing for Vanderbilt also, they've only got five team fouls, so they can continue to defend hard without sending Kentucky to the free throw line, at least for one more foul. Under a minute to go in the contest in Nashville. Hundley holding the ball. He's the kid out of Kentucky, former Mr. Kentucky basketball. How he'd love to beat the Wildcats here in Tennessee today. He's on the baseline. Reverses. Tips his miss. And it comes to Hawkins. Now Vanderbilt can foul without sending Kentucky to the line. So they can be aggressive. Under half a minute to go. Kentucky down by two. Timeout, Tubby Smith. A 30-second timeout with 26 seconds to go. 23 on the shot clock. Watch the miss. Boy, watch this step through. Nice little cut, little shuffle cut along the baseline. A good step through. That was a pretty darn good shot. Just couldn't get it to go down. And that would have made life a lot more difficult for Kentucky. But now in this timeout, you know that Kevin Stalling is going to be telling his team that they do have a foul to give. See there, the five. You don't get into the one and one until you have 17 fouls. Kentucky in this situation, they've been in it quite a bit this year in some close games. They oftentimes like to run a high screen out of a timeout in a late game situation. That was the same thing they ran when Gerald Fitch hit that shot against Tennessee. Kentucky awfully good close and late. They had a big one against North Carolina sealed on a Gerald Fitch three-pointer and inside the conference against Mississippi State. 2.5 seconds left. And this is how they want it. Daniels with the bucket to shock Mississippi State. The Wildcats won there. Well, here they're down by two with 26 seconds to go. Vanderbilt, of course, has lost four in the conference and lost four of their last five games, including a 75 to 63 loss at Kentucky three weeks ago. You know, Dave, one thing that you have to watch out for here, too, is the offensive rebound. In a late game situation like this, you put so much attention on going after the shot, you can leave the offensive glass open. A tip in here can be devastating. Hawkins pulls it up. It's popped up and stolen away. Lakey with the steal. A huge play by the senior Russell Lakey to pick Hawkins. That is a winning play. Kevin Stallings talked about winning plays. Cliff Hawkins not strong with the ball. That was a weak pass trying to get it into Eric Daniels. And Russell Lakey took advantage of that weakness with his strength. Russell Lakey is not a big scorer, but he is a senior. Eight points today. Rebound is tipped out by Freegi. Another huge play by Vandy. Boy, that is a heads-up play by Matt Freegi to just knock that ball back out. 14.3 to go. And Kentucky seconds away from being upset at Vanderbilt. And they fouled the guy who can knock his free throws down. And how fitting. A young man that wanted to go to Kentucky so badly as a Kentucky Mr. Basketball. Having the chance to bury the Wildcats on the road. Scott Hundley. Just two points today, but he's made 80% of his foul shots. Boy, he made a lot of shots at Scott County. Georgetown, Kentucky scored over 2,000 points in his high school career. And he is at the line 
with 14 seconds left. Vandy by three. A giant play by Freegy to knock it back to Huntley, and he makes both foul shots. Now here's where you can take advantage of only five team fouls. Burn some clock, then foul, make them inbound the ball. Vanderbilt could not be in a better position than they're in right now. That has not been said this season with those string of close losses. But they've picked themselves off the floor after a heartbreaking defeat here on Wednesday night. They lost in the last two seconds to South Carolina. Matt Freegy knocking it back. Two guys back for Vanderbilt to get defensive balance. Just a heads-up play by the All-American. This has been an absolute team effort by Vanderbilt. The mental toughness they've shown in coming back in this second half has been extraordinary. Vandy was down five at halftime. Or led by five at halftime. Kentucky came storming back to take the lead. And you see the five fouls, possession arrow, Vandy's as well. Everything set up for Vanderbilt in the last 14.3 seconds. And the most important thing, Dave, those five fouls. What Kevin Stallings is telling his team right now, push up on him. Don't be afraid of getting a foul. But Vanderbilt, this is the key right there. They've got four losses in conference. They cannot afford another one. And this would be a marquee win that the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee would be able to chew upon when they get into that big suite in Indianapolis. Well, they have not gone to the NCAA Tournament since 1997, but Matt Freegy was part of Kevin Stallings' very first recruiting class at Vanderbilt. He's trying to get them back to the big dance, and he just made a big, big play. You don't want to foul too early here. Let him burn some clock. Blakey working on Fitch, and he does lean in and foul him. 8.7 seconds. So just as you pointed out, that's the strategy by Vandy. Allow them to get it across midcourt, foul him, because they're fouls to give. And now you have to play him straight up. And he fouls from now on on one and one, and Kevin Stallings wants to talk it over. Timeout Vanderbilt. The Commodores leading 64 to 60, less than nine seconds away from the first upset of what could be several today. Later on, ESPN has Georgia Tech and Duke. Do you think the Blue Devils are right to be had? Georgia Tech, so many athletes, they can apply so much defensive pressure. Well, it's going to be it's going to be a fight. It's going to depend, I think, on the glass. If Georgia Tech is able to hang with Duke on the glass, they'll have an opportunity. They're an outstanding three-point shooting team. I think right now, Dave, in this ball game, I wouldn't be surprised to see Kevin Stallings come out in the 2-3 zone. Try to give them a zone look. They're putting 10 scooches into the ball game. Give them a little bit more size. And size is something that Georgia Tech does not have, but they've got an awful lot of outstanding shooters tonight at 5 Eastern time. You get to see them take on Duke. And then the turn back the clock game, Indiana, Michigan State. They turn back the clock to 1979. That's at 8 o'clock on ESPN. Here we go now, 8.7 seconds left, Vandy leading 64-60. Vandy trying to get a conference win, but when you beat Kentucky, it's just not a conference win, it's a gigantic win. Hayes, inside Azubuki, didn't get it from short range. 3.4 seconds to play. Shevashevsky, the big kid from Poland. So impressive in the first half. But the man who has led Vandy in the second half has been their star, Matt Freegy. Azubuki getting the ball after setting the screen. But a good job by Scooches of staying big and getting him to change his shot, and then Matt Freegy, who says he's not a rebounder? That was a big-time rebound. It was the miss that he batted in the lane and kept it alive just a few seconds ago, and now the rebound on a play that led to these foul shots. He has 20 points. Vandy leading by six. Long shot off the glass by Fitz, and it's over. Vanderbilt has stunned number five Kentucky by a final score of 66 to 60. They swarm the court at Memorial Gymnasium here in Nashville, Tennessee.
Vandy wins it. Man, did they have to have that one. 66 to 60, the final score. So our final score, a terrific game inside the SEC on this Saturday. Vanderbilt 66, Kentucky 60. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Jay Billis, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks for being with us. And now let's join Carl Ravitch in our ESPN studio, and we'll have more from Nashville, 66 to 60. Vandy with the stunner. Thanks, Carl, with Vanderbilt head coach Kevin Stallings. And Kevin, yesterday when we talked, you talked about your team not really executing at the end of the game and not making winning plays, but today against Kentucky, they did. Well, we did, Jay. You're right. And, and our guys did a great job down the stretch, and, and that's where we had been struggling in games. And, and today we did a really nice job of making plays and getting stops and rebounds. And our kids did a great job. You know, you got down in the second half. Kentucky's defense, one of the best in the country, but yet you showed the mental toughness to make a comeback. How important do you think that was for you? Well, it was critical because, again, same thing happened to us last year. We got up at halftime, and then they came out and turned it up, and we didn't respond. And so, you know, our, our guys have grown in a year, and it's nice to see, and I'm really happy for them. They, they worked very hard, which you saw yesterday, and they deserve this kind of success. You know, Kevin, the first half, David Shibashevsky was hitting threes and looking like an All-American. You think more recruiting trips to Poland may be in order? Well, he played awfully well, and, and, you know, he had that look yesterday in practice. He, he was really good yesterday in practice, and some of my coaches wanted me to start him, but he, he played a great game, and I'm really happy for him. He's a great kid. What do, you, what do you think next coming up for this team? Do you think you've got the, the varied offense to be able to really have a run now? Well, we got to get consistent points inside. You know, we, we'll get some baskets outside most of the time, but we got to get consistent points inside, and we got to get the ball to Freeji and some of our other big guys in there and convert when we get it in there. Well, Kevin, congratulations on a signature win. Thanks a lot, Jack. Carl, back to you.